When it comes to winter RV living in Florida, there's a lot of different styles. From staying at the fancy schmancy luxury RV resorts. To boondocking on absolutely free public land. This week, we're taking you along for both extremes. We're gonna see what one you like best. First up, we are going fancy and heading to an RV resort that I have heard so, so, so much about. And I'm really excited to see if it's as good as everyone says it is. If you were following us last week, we are getting ready to leave the Florida State Fair campground where the Super Show, RV Super Show happens. We are going to a campground from here. It's not too far, it's like an hour drive, but apparently there is a lot of other people that have gone there, so. I don't know, maybe we'll get to hang out with some of you guys. Get out of there. Come on, do it, do it, go, go, harder, faster. Come on, go. I'm just in a rut. Should be enough. Probably not, <laughs> I just probably just rolled back onto the chalk. <laughs> it wouldn't go, I got scared. Needed to pull forward to, oh, it's good. Back up. Get the back chalks out. You ready to go or one of the last ones to pull out? I uh, know. That's just like a good old wild RV life fashion right there. Being last to everything, or just last. So now that we're on level ground, we're gonna see how level we are. With and the new hitch. With the new hitch, the Gen Y, um, about 500 miles towed on it now. And uh, I'm checking to see how level we are from front to back. And it does look like we're a little high in the front, so we might have to adjust it a bolt hole. Yeah, just a bit. Although yeah. I do like the clearance between the bed rails and the cap, but it's not bad though. Come back here and look at it. Oh. Got it. Oh. Got it. Oh. I think it's a little bit, but. Yeah. Not bad. And it's probably not enough to be an issue, but why risk it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Maverick says we can go now. It's time to go. Time to go. Let's get on the road. Weather says it's gonna get sunny later this week, and I really hope so, because this place will probably be a lot better if it's sunny and warm, like Florida's supposed to be. Isn't that why everybody comes here in the winter? Florida has forgotten it's Florida the last right, few right. weeks. So we made it, Camp Margaritaville in Auburndale. It's supposed to be pretty fancy. Look, there's a Brinkley over there. Ah, we ain't even special no more. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard a lot about this resort just online, seeing people come here and everybody, I mean, it looks pretty cool, um, very clean and nice. We'll show you guys around, show you what the- Another Brinkley. Another Brinkley? What is happening? Oh my gosh, we're just one of the masses now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you buy a Brinkley and come to Margaritaville, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Um, we'll show you around, show you what the RV resort lifestyle is like. You know we don't live this very often, so we gotta live it up while we can. Yeah. Got our golf cart escort here. So this is one of the nice things though about fancier or nicer campgrounds. You do get escorted to the site. So that you know the best way to go. Yeah. Is this ours? Oh, yeah, I guess it's gonna Oh, just I didn't know it was pull through. I didn't either, I thought it was gonna be back end. I need my mirror. Never fails. Check it out. Make sure you like the placement. Looks well, good to me. Yeah, look at the other side with I our. I don't need to. It's, it's fancy. The sights are wide, so I don't need to. Little <laughs> deep here. Plenty of room. Nice. All right, let's get it set up. We got a grill too. Ooh. I'm using my grill though. I gotta use the Web Weber. Craig just discovered that there's a TV up there. And you know what he said? I'm gonna put our YouTube channel on. I don't know who signed in on it, but I'm making them subscribe to Wild RV Life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all know what time it is. Craig has been dying to try out his new grill and I don't think there's a better place to do it than our little outdoor oasis here. We got some chicken and Craig's about to grill it. I just 
prepared it for him. We're grilling some chicken because we're gonna have grilled chicken salad. We have decided to finally start being healthy again and lose a little bit of weight. This is our second day of eating like we should have been eating months ago. Hopefully it'll turn out good and hopefully I won't get burned out on salad too quick. While the grill is heating up, let me show you around our site here. First of all, it's huge. Actually, all the sites here at Kent Margaritaville are pretty spacious. We do have the one with the Tiki Hut, of course, which is pretty cool. They got lights for nighttime and a nice little sitting area with the AstroTurf, a patio spot with picnic table, the perfect outdoor sitting area. Now, I'm not gonna lie, these, these sites run you a pretty penny. So all these sites are probably over a hundred bucks. I wanna say this one's like 150 a night and it's not somewhere we would typically pay for and stay, but however, for like a nice little vacation, especially after a Tampa RV show or RV super show, whatever it's called, can't remember because there's two different ones, but uh, it's a nice little break in vacation, especially the Tiki Hut and the TV outside and everything. It's nice. This time we got this good old juicy, Ooh, juicy chicken. Now, like we said, we're showing you both extreme styles of winter RV living in Florida. Some people do spend all winter in resorts like these. I don't know how, holy smokes. It's a nice, nice way to spend a winter. Don't get me wrong. We're gonna show you around the resort tomorrow. So there's yeah, a lot of, of amenities. The, some of the amenities. There's a lot. Okay, I'm putting the rest of our salad together with all our toppings. And let me show you what I've got, strawberries cucumbers, green pepper, pecans or pecans, depending on where you're from, tomatoes, cheese, and olives. Now two of these Craig will absolutely not eat and I have to keep separate. Go ahead and put your guesses in the comments which two those are. Look at these nice lines on that chicken. That's a good old grilled piece of chicken right there. I'd eat it. Do you like any of these things on your salad? Not even almost. <laughs> I told him there's two things. Look how gross things. it looks. I told him there's two things you want to eat, the olives and the tomatoes. That's disgusting. Craig's measuring. Listen, I think, um, so if you're deciding to be healthy this year, one of the biggest things you can do is portion control, and you can't do it. I don't care what people say or anything. You cannot do portion control without actually measuring. So we have a food scale, and now we're measuring everything that we, we put. Well, a monster over there. It's only 10 calories. Mm. And I put this in my, my fitness pile. Well, measure mine and, and, and drape it for me. <laughs> Is that what it's called, draping dressing? Know. All right, look at that. It looks pretty good. We're gonna have a lot more cooking at home in our future, so. Which means more dishes. More dishes, <laughs> more meals to think of to cook. Yeah, let us know what your favorite healthy meal is. Leave it down in the comments, cause we're going to really try hard to eat healthy. We mean it this time. Yeah, at least for, at least for a few months. <laughs> All right, so that's it for tonight, guys. We're going to clean up we got a pile of dishes because that's what happens when you actually eat at home <sighs> dishes and we'll pick back up tomorrow while we're showing you around the campground we got to show you a lot of the amenities and show you what makes this rv park so nice all right time to show you around the resort on the electric e-bikes of course however i do not recommend filming while riding a bike and every time i do it i nearly crash so yeah you better not <laughs> carry this camera and try then so we're gonna set craig up i don't even think he knows what's coming but i've decided it's gopro time uh, and head strap time this is like, about to be so much fun <laughs> i want to get footage of us riding around and so the only way to well, do I this i gotta be the one wearing it and everybody's staring at me hmm? 
because it's gonna be much more fun to watch you run around with a camera strapped to your head. I don't even know if it's gonna be able to see. There we go. Oh, Ooh, looky there. It's tight. You're giving me a headache. <laughs> Clearly, we don't ever use this stuff. Can it see? I think you gotta tilt it down a little bit. There you go. That should be good. Okay, turn it on. How off. cool do you look? I feel like not at all. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Tell Craig you look cool. Tell him in the comments, say, you're cool, Craig. Oh, it ain't changing nothing. <laughs> I ain't doing this often. So as you can see, this park is pretty huge, but all of the sites are very spacious and nice looking. I was surprised about that. It's not just the like Tiki Hut site that we have that looks nice. Even the ones without the Tiki Huts are spacious and landscaped well and very clean. But one of my favorite things is probably how dog friendly this place is. There's like at least three dog park areas that we've seen. One is this huge dog run, a couple of other dog parts with the agility courses in them, and then a pet spa. The pet spa is included with your stay, no extra charge or anything. There's like two wash tubs, the dryer, the soap, all the stuff you need, plus the little areas with the AstroTurf to let the dogs dry off so that they don't get all muddy right after they get out of the bath. Anyways, very cool. Lots of good pet friendly and kid friendly stuff that we'll show you in just a bit. There's pickleball courts, of course, um, at least one, maybe two, not sure. But there's also two pools. We haven't seen one of them that's, I believe, by a lake. So we're gonna show you that. I'm actually really glad we had the bikes because we decided to wait until like the hottest day of the week. It's like 80 something degrees to come explore the resort, but we're at the little restaurant bar and lake and pool. So let's see if we can get something to drink. So we've got our pineapple coconut smoothies. I don't want to call it pina colada because we don't drink alcohol, but I don't know. Alcohol always has like the best types of drinks like slushies. So we got our virgin pina colada? I don't know, whatever you call them nowadays. It's good though. It is very good, really good. So it's gotten dark. However, we still got a very important competitive game of putt-putt golf. So we're gonna do that now. And I'm gonna win. No. Of course, that's why we're keeping score. So we're about halfway through and of course I'm winning. I tried to not even take score or keep score with the game and Victoria insisted, so. Huh. It's only by two points. Two points. I'm coming back. I am coming back. Last hole. I think I'm losing. I'm not sure there's any hope for me. But let's see. Let's see. I don't know what to do. By the way, we're trying to. It's back at the starting point. Miss a hole. You missed a whole week. Every time. Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? There was one hole that I maxed out at seven on, and then we let Craig max out on seven on that last hole, which means that we came to me winning by one point. I, I don't know if we can trust her because she did all the scorekeeping, and it's just super ironic to me that she happened to win by one i point. won by one point okay okay <laughs> so this area where the the mini golf is is the main like hangout area with a pool there's fire pits there's a little tiki bar there's a splash pad water slide water oh yeah huge water slide dog parking so much stuff and out every night people come out here there's music they hang out it's it's a good time well, that wraps up our time at Camp Margaritaville. We had a really nice time and enjoyed it, but now we are off to the complete opposite kind of winter RV living in Florida, which is at a totally free boondocking spot called Istapoga Canal. And I'm sure I said that wrong, but I cannot figure out how on earth you say it. 
So this will be the first time we've boondocked in a really long time, it feels like. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm hoping that there will actually be like a decent amount of space between everybody and everything like that. And the dogs will have places to actually walk around and, and play and everything. But um, I'm not sure, because it is Florida and everybody comes to Florida during the winter, so it could be very packed also. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about the water management areas and how you book them, because you do have to reserve the site, but it is free in just a little while. But I think it's the really cool thing about Florida is that you can go from either extreme, fancy RV resorts, live in large, to boondocking and enjoying the Florida weather in, this, in the winter. As we've continued driving, it has gotten cloudier and cloudier, and it is something we're a little bit nervous about this week with being off grid and needing solar because it has just been cloudy for a lot of days here recently in Florida. How do you think we're gonna do? I don't know, I hope the sun comes out sometime today. <laughs> because we also just put our generator in storage. Uh, we ain't got a generator, and we're here for how long, a week? A week, yeah. We definitely need some sun. The plan, if we absolutely need to, is to just go buy a smaller generator. We knew we were going to get one eventually. We were just putting it off as long as possible, because why spend the money if you don't need to? As far as I can tell from reading the Campendium listing, looking on Google Maps, and watching a video of this place, it should be an easy inn, easy park. It looks like open fields and easy roads. So let's hope it goes that way. The boat ramp, because Road. Surprise, surprise, the water management areas have water. Oh, this looks, see, it's nice Hammond, and open. WMA, Ice Dock Boga Canal, SFWMD on the left. A quarter mile. Looks like a lot of people here. It's supposed to be all the way around kind of at the back, and there will be a road to get to the camping area. Seems to be a decent amount of people here. Hopefully we can get a good spot in the field with sun. This is the first. We have a sign that says, please check in with campground host. So I guess maybe they're gonna tell us where we go next, but we did get in through the gate. Okay, the campground host is clearly not there. So we're just gonna pick a spot. Okay, let me make sure, cause we still haven't raised those back jacks like we need to. The cabin bed look good. You gonna go slow or? Oh gosh, okay, I guess we're good. Okay, we think we found ourselves a spot and got backed in here, although I'm not sure it's technically a spot, but I don't know. I guess whenever we talk to the camp host, they'll tell us if we're somewhere we're not supposed to be. Hopefully this will work. Put ourselves in the field where there should be solar. So one of the nice things about boondocking is that I don't have to set up the sewer and the water. It's all ready to go no once we get here. No electric, <laughs> yeah, unless there's a generator, but so it's nice. It makes the setup process faster. Oh, not yet, Leo <laughs> Maverick. And now it's time to get settled in, get the fans on, the screens up so that we can open the windows, get some airflow because it's cooling down starting tomorrow, but it's a little warm today. And uh, we'll show you around this place in just a bit. But first, what are you doing? Making a wrap, two wraps actually. Hope you didn't think one of these are for you. <laughs> what? What are you doing there? Still, still weighing your portions. Yeah. Look at us go. Still on roll. It's only day five. Do you know that? Feels like forever, but it's only oh, day wow. five. Wow. Okay, let's start by talking about our site. It's pretty awesome. And we did, for the record, actually end up moving because we found out when the camp host came around that we were supposed to be by a picnic table and we were not. He was gonna let us stay, but the people beside us headed out the next morning. So we stole their spot and it's been great. So it actually ended up being a really good spot. We're kind of in this field, so we're getting a lot of solar. There's no trees over the RV. And we also get a lot of space right here. There's another spot next to us, but nobody has claimed it and we've been here for a few days. So we just ended up with this big old area. 
One of our favorite things about boondocking in general is that you almost always get a bigger site than pretty much any other RV park you would go to, no matter how much you pay for it. Yep. <laughs> and the cool thing about these water management areas in Florida is that they always have some sort of, imagine this, water nearby. So we're gonna take you around and, and show you what there is in this boondocking spot. So this specific place has a boat ramp um, into a canal. I believe it gets a little busier on the weekends here. Overall, since we've been here, though, it's been pretty quiet. We have seen a handful of uh, fan boats, air boats, come and go, and I'll hear them every now and then in the mornings. I don't know if, I, I guess, leaving or going out. But yeah, other than that, it's been pretty quiet and it's a nice little area. And I bet it is full of gators. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> this, you know, we have taken our paddle boards out on a canal like this and literally saw like eight, seven, seven yeah, eight gators something. on the way. I, we, we actually did film that long, long time ago. I'll link the video if you want to see us, you know, paddle board our inflatable paddle boards with gators. I, it's, we're a couple years older and I don't know if I would do it again. Yeah, they didn't get us in. We also found this really cool trail. It actually connects to a trail that is like nine miles long. We brought the dogs the other day to walk them and they enjoyed it until we all almost stepped on a cotton mouth snake and I freaked out and you know, so we're not bringing the dogs today, but we're gonna take the bikes cause I feel like we can get away fast enough. <laughs> So one of the obvious perks of standing in the campground is you get all the amenities of water hookups, sewer dump, place to throw your trash. Um, like we got to just put it out at the end of our campsite to throw our trash away and they'll come by and pick it up. You don't really have that boondocking. However, I would consider this spot an easy place to boondock. Like the space is nice. There is a place to throw your trash away and to fill up your RV with potable water um, if you run out while you're here. So we're gonna do that now. There are even some pit toilets, which we have not checked out, so we can't speak to how clean they are because we have our own bathroom, so we don't need that. Nice and clean in here, isn't it? Is. It is. This is what two hours will get you. This looks nice. Don't look in the I gotta order. get back out and film this. This is clean. I, I don't even want to get in. All right, check this out. Clean, clean. It won't be for long, guys. It does not take her but one time getting in, as you can already see some grass in the floorboard. No, I picked it out. I picked it. There's, oh, hang on, hang on. Nobody cares. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what I just realized? What? This will be the first time we get to use, make use of the truck bed oh, no. with the water nice. bladder. We now that we actually have room in our truck bed. We got to throw all this trash away first. So it just says water. Uh, ideally you'd want to say potable water, but the camp host here did say it's really good drinking water. And over there is a giant like water softener and um, water purifier and stuff like that. So I feel pretty comfortable with it. <laughs> so if you're boondocking, you definitely want to get like a water meter to, so you know how many gallons you're putting into a water bladder or even going into your freshwater tank. It's a good idea to have one. Um, just helps you keep track of the amount of water you're using and putting in. What'd you do there? I got to close the shut off valve. <laughs> we we're losing water just as quick as we could put it in. Well, now I won't know how much I've put it in. <laughs> it's oh, probably gosh. only leaked a gallon. So like five <laughs> gallons has gone in. Oh goodness. It really does, it really does. Just got done meeting the camp host. Um, Super nice guy out here. It's another thing with this boondocking spot. Like I said earlier, this is, I would consider an easy boondocking area because you do feel safer. You do get some amenities. It's a little bit more work to use them amenities, but you do get some. Um, and then you also have a campground host, which sometimes can be annoying or sometimes be very beneficial. For instance, like uh, this place has desi designated campsites, camp spots. So he's gonna keep people from parking right up next to you and keep them in the campsites where we have been in places and people park right next to you. And while Craig is getting the water into the RV, I'm gonna come and start preparing dinner. 
We're gonna do a pretty simple dinner tonight. Gonna marinate some chicken that we can put on the grill. And then we already have some leftover yellow rice and then some type of vegetable we'll throw into the mix as well. And we decided to go with sweet peppers because we can put these on the grill as well. I'm just gonna cut them in half, do a little bit of olive oil, sprinkle some seasoning on them and they should be good to go. You ready for the food? Yeah. <laughs> If you come on. <laughs> I got it ready. <laughs> Look at this, a nice little table for this side, a little table for that side. All the table space is maxed out now. <laughs> now we'll have a grill. Nice. All right, now that we've done both types of winter RV camping lifestyles in Florida, which one do you think is the best? I really like my space, so boondocking is my favorite however going to nice luxury campgrounds is very nice also especially for like a break having that tiki hut there and being able to edit the videos and stuff under that was extremely nice so i, I don't know it's a hard decision really i think there are definitely pros and cons to each i think the fact that we have a site like this for zero dollars yeah. zero dollars versus what you pay at a luxury resort. Like there's another got, thing, there's don't a, forget, that site was 150 bucks a night. It was right? nice, I enjoyed, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it and I would go back, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. I would go back there. It's more of a vacation. Exactly, it's more of a vacation. So I think the key is to just balance it out, you know, do a little bit of both. Let us know, let us know down in the comments, what do you like best? Do you typically boondock or thousand trails or stay in nice resort campgrounds like Margaritaville. I mean, I did have a really fun time beating Craig at Putt-Putt Golf. We can't let everybody forget about that. Huh? We can't let everybody forget about how I beat you at Putt-Putt Golf. She, I can't, she there's no Putt-Putt putt Golf out here. She cheated. We could put a hole in the ground and we'll see who wins. And now it's time to eat, but thank you guys for joining us. Please let us know what style of camping you prefer and also we just hit our one year on youtube i know recently. one year of doing youtube wow i don't it's been know crazy how many subscribers do you have to have before you say you're a youtuber i, I wonder know. it's I always know. weird we always it always feels weird like are we yeah. are we youtubers i don't like saying that it feels <laughs> strange and uh but if you want to watch this from the beginning, our first video, actual first video, is a review of Compresco Campground, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just watch from there through, um, and you'll get a lot of good content. Also, if you really enjoy boondocking and want to know more about boondocking, we have videos in there that also talk more oh, about fun. boondocking. Um, we don't get to do it much on the East Coast. So, so if you just joined us within the last maybe a couple months or so, you're probably like, what are these people talking about? They don't boondock. We normally do. Mm -hmm. So just go back, watch those videos, and we'll put them up here coming up next. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.